Okay, this is one question I've been asking myself lately, and I'd like to ask you. And I'm not just addressing this to the Occupy movements all over the world, but everybody all over the world. At what point in the future will we, our society, our world, get rid of money? Yeah, the whole monetary system, we won't need it anymore. Now, is somebody saying never? Uh uh. We know we'll get rid of money at some point because the captain has told us about future economics. The economics of the future is somewhat different. Yeah, and not just somewhat different, a lot different because. You see, money doesn't exist. Aha, uh -huh, money doesn't exist in the future. See, there's your proof right there. All right, I understand some of you might be saying, future? What future? <laughs> I know, if we stick with this system that keeps us fighting each other, gives us these endless wars, then we're headed down Apocalypse Road, and that's a possibility. But let's remain hopeful for the moment and imagine that we can create a different kind of system which doesn't require the fighting, because we've realized that it really is a global village and we have to work together to take care of it. And that being driven by selfish motives, the acquisition of money and power, is not the way to go about it. The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. Gee, what a concept, huh? Now, back to the question, when? And I'll give you three choices. A um, hundred years? And geological time, that's not that long. But from our perspective, it's an eternity. Think about how our world changed in that last century. We were just beginning to make cars and no airplanes to where we are now? Or do you think it could happen in 50 years? Now think about this exponential growth of our scientific knowledge and technology. We can't imagine what it'll look like in 50 years. Okay, maybe 10 years? Now before you answer, don't just toss out an, an opinion based on the way you feel about it at the moment. If we want to make an educated guess, there are a few things we should consider. And I'll just mention three or four, and then I'll move along as quickly as I can here. Number one, think about why we have money in the first place. Why did we invent it? Well, because we needed something to represent the value of stuff. And that value is based on how much time and effort, labor, went into making this stuff, along with how much of it was available and how badly people wanted it supply and demand. Now think about how hard it was in the past to produce food. You had to get out the horse and hook up the plow and build irrigation systems, then harvest it by hand and get it to the market. A lot of work there and you should be compensated for that. Now think about in years to come when we've created automated systems that could do all this with practically no labor that could produce as much food as everyone needs. In that case, do we need to put a monetary value on it? There's no need to sell it, exchange it for money, right? Okay, another example. Think about building a house, getting the materials and the people, builders to do the work. What if in the future we've made systems that can produce these prefabricated components and assemble homes where no one would have to be homeless? No price tag needed. And with energy using clean, renewable systems, which we can do now on a local scale, we wouldn't need the drilling and blasting, the, the fracking, which is good for jobs in our current system, right? Good for business, not so good for people or the environment in many cases, but a system that continually produces energy for free without human labor, that would be good for people, good for the environment, but bad for business. Now, do you see how backwards our current system will seem to people in the future? Hello. Anyway, if we're thinking about creating a world without money, that means a world where everyone would have access to everything they need and most everything they want. This is what we're talking about. So we should rephrase the question, at what point in the future do you think our technology will make these automated systems possible and allow us to move out of a monetary system? All right, that explains the labor part, but, um, but you might be saying, what about the supply and demand? Will there be enough resources if everybody wants everything? Well, remember, we wouldn't be in this current system anymore that requires constant consumption and instills those values. The goal in this future system is to use our resources conservatively, make as much as we need, not as much as we possibly can. 
I was talking to someone who said, in a system like this, everyone would want their own jet ski. But do you really want your own jet ski where you have to store it at home and have a trailer and a vehicle to pull it then use it for a few hours and haul it back home and store it again and do maintenance? No, it would be better to have access to a jet ski when you want to use it and leave it there when you're done. And there could be enough for everyone. Unless you want your own jet to ski behind, in which case that's asking a little too much, don't you think? <laughs> These days, more and more, I've been hearing people talk about this type of system and access economy or access abundance because it makes so much more sense. Instead of making 100,000 jet skis, we could make 20,000 or 30. And with this example, how else could we be saving resources? Think about accessories like all the trailers. We could use all these materials for solar collectors or housing components, something relevant. And this Access economy concept would apply to almost everything. Maybe you'd like to learn how to play the guitar. Well, now you have to shop around and try to find a good deal, and you buy one, play it for a few weeks or months, lose interest. How many guitars or other instruments are sitting in closets or garages right now? So instead, you'd go to the music center or whatever we call it and check one out, like a library, basically. You lose interest, you return it. Somebody else checks it out. Do you see how we could use so much less of our resources if everyone had access to the things they want? If the goal was not to make and sell as many as possible, like this outdated growth economy requires, but make as many as we need, as people want. I know it's hard to get a handle on that concept, counterintuitive, it's like the opposite of what our traditional thinking would have us believe. And this is number three to consider, the traditional values that are drilled into us by our culture. And it's something that could work against us, that hinders our growth, makes it harder to transition into an updated system because people tend to hold on to what's familiar. We're fearful of something different or unknown. And the small group of people who are in power, they, they don't want to see any change in these values. No, these established institutions are working great for that 1% who control the mainstream media where you'll hear them saying, don't listen to people who are proposing any kind of change or rational alternatives. They just want to control you even more than we're controlling you. And don't trust common sense and logic or, or you'll be screwed. Even worse than we're screwing you right now with this system keeping you in debt, slavery, and lifelong servitude to us. Yeah, it's kind of sad that we're limited in many ways by our traditional thinking. Some of us can't imagine not having this monetary system. And they think people will always be fighting each other for domination, that it's our nature, when it's not. It's the system we're trapped in which requires that kind of behavior, see? It's not our nature. Human beings would rather cooperate and help each other. And this has been proven by people who study the human brain, can actually look into it and see how it functions. But when we finally grow up and get out of this system, we won't be fighting each other anymore, trying to crush the competition and accumulate more possessions and power. People are no longer obsessed with the accumulation of things. We've eliminated hunger, want, the need for possessions. We've grown out of our infancy. Here's something to think about. Not long ago, in the 1950s, there were millions of people who were saying, we'll never walk on the moon. And in the next decade, there we were. Hey, do you want to know why so many people were saying that? It's because the idea of a man walking on the moon was so far outside their reality, their everyday experience. So outside of their familiar, traditional thinking. That's one reason, and here's another. These people were not up to date with the advancements in technology. They didn't know what was possible at that point in time with the latest scientific discoveries and breakthroughs. But this kind of limited traditional thinking is a problem. You wish you could hop in a time machine and go back there and grab these people by the shoulders and shake them and say, wake up, of course we'll be walking on the moon in the next decade. You know, our astronauts will be up there bouncing around in their go-karts and hitting golf balls on the moon, come on. Open up your mind. Your limited thinking is holding us back. I mean, if it's a collective consciousness, then we need everyone to wake up and be conscious. Oh, 
What do you guys do? I mean, you don't drink and you ain't got no TV. Must be kind of boring, ain't it? Okay, here's one last thing to consider. We see how these cultural values and our traditional thinking could slow down this transition. But here's something that could counter that and work in our favor. And that is the rational thinking that people are doing now. When looking at the reality of our predicament and, and then at what is actually possible. When they get up to date with the latest technology, looking at how things could be so different seeing the possibilities, the benefits to the health of our planet and our environment and our own health. And once again, what's the main reason things would be so different? Money doesn't exist. Right. Without the restrictions of a monetary system, everything changes. When automated systems are doing their work, then money becomes obsolete, along with everything else related to it. And it's mind-boggling when you start to think of all the ramifications. So let's run through here. Come on, full ramification ahead. All right, we started with simple money to represent real things, then some banks and more banks with bigger branches and central banks with their criminal reserves, investment banks, lending institutions, savings and loans, commercial banks, private banks, offshore banks, credit unions, equal opportunity lenders, stock markets and brokers and commodity exchanges and traders, and gold dealers, financial advisors. Oh my God, look at all these things. And, and what's everybody doing in these occupations? Counting numbers, yeah, that's right. People need real things, food and housing and energy, but we're just moving numbers around so many numbers that we need new occupations, accountants to keep track of them, yeah, and some internal auditors and accounting clerks, and budget analysts, and tax accountants. And if the numbers don't add up, we'll need lawyers, trial lawyers, business attorneys, and a court system where they can fight it out. Your Honor, the, these are the correct numbers. Um, if you just add the, the net assets with the gross profits and to subtract the income credits of the mortgage-backed securities from the losses on the credit swaps and deferred annuities, and the game plays on. Oh. oh, and you know, there's a lot that can go wrong with all these things, so we'll need insurance for our business and our workers and our homes and cars, our health, and what else? Oh my God, just look at all the things that we can make up. How about um, kidnap insurance? Yeah, you bet. Terrorism insurance, why not? Insurance against alien abduction, sure. Somebody tried that. We'll, we'll try anything to keep the pyramid growing. Lots of forms to fill out and endless paperwork where we can write more numbers and, and then move those numbers around. But remember, this is what we're getting rid of. We're letting go of this for our next generation, so, so let's feel good for them. This is happy time. Come on, smile, damn it. Plaster on a big smile for me. It gets better. Yeah, there you go. All right, um, no need to have representatives in Washington making decisions for us. These decisions are made right there in your town, by your community, for your community. No need to debate budgets, no money. We'd be discussing resource allocation, maybe, and the, the best ways to keep our automated production systems running efficiently, improving them in your own community. Bureaucrats, politicians a thousand miles away will not be required. Not working for them anymore. <laughs> Don't need to give them a portion of your work. Hey, everybody, no taxes! Does that give you a tingle in your jingle? Come on, let's celebrate! For our next generation, I guess. I'm, I'm jealous, I'm, I'm envious. I mean, wouldn't you like to be a part of that generation when we've, we've grown out of our infancy? Hey, don't feel bad if you're working at any of these occupations that are irrelevant to what people need. You're in the majority. Wow. Yeah, that's right. The majority of us are working at things people don't need. It's, it's Ooh. funny. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not oh. funny. And, you know, these aren't the only problems that disappear with money. 
Think about crime. Is anybody robbing anybody else? No. People can have what they need now, so there's, there's no incentive to take advantage of, of others. No motivation for that, see? And most crimes about money and property, so that's all gone. And uh, these two. <laughs> and this and that. You begin to see how money just might be the root of all evil. But don't think this is going to be some kind of utopia because there will still be problems. And I bet you can think of a few. Breakdowns with the systems now and then, huh? which can be fixed, but they're problems. And shortages of certain supplies or resources. Again, these can be corrected, hopefully without much inconvenience. And people might argue about which approach works the best, but these can be tested because we're dealing with technical issues. Now tell me, what kind of problems are these? They're real problems that people need to be dealing with, that, that can be solved. And wouldn't you rather be spending some of your time working with and solving problems that are relevant or related to projects in your community? instead of the kinds of problems that we have to deal with now. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of sickness generated by this system. And we all suffer from it to some degree. Think about the values we profess to strive for. Do unto others. Treat your fellow human beings with respect, empathy, love. But we have a system that rewards just the opposite. The people at the top are the, are the best takers, the, the best at gaining advantage over others. And they'll step all over people and use them to climb higher up the pyramid, which could be described as a form of psychopathic behavior by definition. The people who are at the top of the money game, they're just the sickest. Yeah, they're the most ruthless, business savvy psychopaths that we can produce. I mean, look at some of these guys. Would they even know what to do with themselves in a world without money? Then what will happen to us? There's no trace of my money. My office is gone. What will I do? Oh man, listen to that. What a pussy. What will I do without my money? Who am I? What will I do? How will I live? Material needs no longer exist. Then what's the challenge? The challenge, Mr. Offenhaus, is to improve yourself, to enrich yourself. Enjoy it. But, um, you know, we can't really blame them in one sense. It's the game we've created. And um, at its highest level, it's about cutthroat competition, domination, crush your competitors. And they're just doing what people do in this system and you wish we could change them somehow, make them care more about people than possessions and power. Might not be possible though, when we're in this game. We have to change the game. Money is something we've needed in the past, you know, a necessary evil. And we've created this huge artificial structure to support it, a big old wall, and we keep building it up piling on the bullshit, but it's crumbling now, you know? Foundational flaws. And it's a wall that just divides us. It's time to dismantle it. The wall must come down, this iron curtain made of paper. Hey, here's my new battle cry. Mr. Mr. Moneybags, tear down this wall. <laughs> what do you think, huh? You have warmed my heart. All right, so after considering these things, the the facts about labor and automation and demand and the access economy, the traditional thinking that, that holds us back, and the rational thinking that reveals the reality and all the possibilities. Well, a hundred years, or 50, maybe 10. Let's add one more, um, maybe now. Yeah, we could do this now. We could begin this transition if we could all just come together and with one giant collective pull, get our heads out of our asses.
And I'll leave you with that pleasant thought and the realistic possibilities when we've grown... We've grown out of our infancy. We may have to stop a few times and pick up some of these stragglers along the way, but we'll get there. <laughs>